Casey Swim. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand for him. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, I can't hear you up in here. I thought I was coming home to a place where I was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, where people were excited about the Lord. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. The pastor said that he's not an eloquent speaker, but I recall in the word, that's what Moses said, that God used Moses to tear down a tyrant named Pharaoh. I'm here to tell you God doesn't care about your eloquence. He cares about your faithfulness, amen? It's a good thing to have a witness about the Holy Spirit being in you. I thank God that this was the place that God used to baptize me and fill me with the Holy Ghost that I might go on and participate in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's not about me, it's about God. I won't take too much of your time. As the pastor said, I've definitely been having some neck problems and back problems. I had a major car accident last October. But as I laid in my bed this morning, I thought about Paul. And Paul, I don't, I don't necessarily know because the Bible doesn't tell us that he said he prayed three times that God would remove some thorn from his side. Intellectuals claim to know what that thorn was theologians, scholars. I don't know what it was, but I know God told him he wasn't going to remove it. Amen? He said that my grace is sufficient for thee. And I pray to the Lord for strength to come back to this house in spite of whatever pain I feel, in spite of whatever discomfort I feel, then testify of the goodness of God and the reality of God in a world which has, which has turned against God. And I'm here to say that God is not mocked and his word shall go forward. I'm going to ask you because we know that it's very important that we base everything we say precept upon precept in this house. Amen? And it should be so in every house. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to Jude. Jude chapter 1. We're going to quickly go through a few scriptures. Amen? Jude chapter 1 verses 3 and four. Let the church say amen when you get there. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ amen how many of you know that around the world today, not only in Michigan, not only in America, but around the world, there have been certain men who have crept in unaware, who have now revealed themselves and are trying to turn the house of God against God all over the world. They're trying to say that God ordains and accepts any manner of love in spite of the fact that it could be a man with a man and a woman with a woman I'm here to tell you that the devil is a lie. Amen? You see, the issue is not so much just homosexuality. That's the tool that Satan uses to essentially cause you, anyone who might fall for the deception, to deny the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his work on Calvary. And once again, I say that the devil is a liar. I got a call from a reporter about two weeks ago. She said, Reverend Swimp, there are 50 pastors that have gathered in Detroit and they're saying that they want to get together so that they can file a lawsuit against the state of Michigan for the right to marry men in the church, in God's house. 
And I was asked by the reporter, what do you have to say about that? And I told the reporter, I'm going to give you an answer. But I want you to make sure you say everything I tell you word for word. And it won't matter to me what you say about it after the fact. You just make sure you print it word for word. And what I said to the reporter, I say to every pastor that's watching this today, anyone that would pervert the word of God and turn it upside down and say that God's word is not true, who calls himself a pastor, you, sir, are an apostate. And every such pastor should be run out of every house of God in every city and every state across this country. Am I right about it? For the Bible says that beware, I beseech you, brethren, in Romans chapter 17, to beware of those who cause divisions and, and offenses contrary to the doctrine in which we have received and we are told by the word of God to mark them. That means you need to make sure you know who they are, be, pay attention to them, and most of all, avoid them. Avoid them. It doesn't make any difference whether it's your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your daughter, your son. The time has come where we are going to have to decide, are we going to stand with God come what may? Turn with me to one more scripture. I promise you I won't take too much of your time. Revelations chapter 12. Revelations chapter 12, verses 10 through 20. Through 12, I'm sorry. Let the church say amen when you... It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, how many of you know the good news is the redemptive work of God in his Christ? Salvation. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame him, the accuser, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. How many of you know that across the country I keep hearing about Christians who are saved by grace talking about how they are afraid of the persecution of the enemies of God. I had a call from a reporter from the Christian Herald, a Christian newsletter online that said, Reverend Swift, thank you so much Thank you so much for being willing to stand because I'm having a difficult time finding Christian men and pastors who would stand and contend vigorously for the word of God. She said, because they said they're afraid. Clearly she hadn't talked to anyone from Greater Bible Way. Amen. I want you to know something. The accuser of our brethren, the number one weapon of warfare, my friends, of the enemy is accusations. I know because I'm going through it day and day, day in and day out. Oh, they'll drag up anything and everything they can. Rumors and whispers, some true and untrue, anything to cause you to be shamed and quiet before God, but I'm here to tell you I will not be quiet. It doesn't make any difference what dirt you might bring up, we can't shut up. It doesn't make any difference what whispers and gossip and lies, even truths they might bring up about you and your faults and your weaknesses and your frailties. You must not quit. Amen. You must not love your life even unto the death. You see, the problem is, too many of us don't understand that you don't get to choose the cross you bear. You don't get to choose the nature, the weight, the length, the depth of the cross you bear. You only get to choose whether you're going to bear it. I choose to bear it. You see, I can't turn around because I remember when I was on the streets at 12, it was that God. The one that brought me here to Greater Bible Way and filled me with the Holy Spirit. The only God that saved me at 12. 
that brought me out of prison and illiteracy self-doubt and hatred of others and hatred of myself abuse and sexual addictions and all manner of filth that I was mired in I can't turn around now I've come too far I think there's somebody here that might can relate to that how many of you have come too far to turn around now how many of you can say God has done too much for you to turn around now how many of you can say that you don't care about the persecution the accusations that you would stand up because guess what I'm gonna wind it down by telling you this you don't even have to defend yourselves against the lies of Satan for the work of Christ on Mount Calvary has already done it for you the blood of Jesus Christ has already satisfied these accusations against you in the eyes of God and you are covered with the blood you all you have to do is stand on the Word of God because God sees the blood and the Holy Spirit in you do the work of Christ do the work of the ministry of the Holy Spirit do the work of the gospel speak truth in season and out of season and love not your own life even unto the death thanks be to God amen